The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. I have seen several people making one of the Star of Spores from the new Suicide Squad movie. And I wanted to make one myself, but I saw one of my favorite makers, PR Props, aka Jose Madera, making one himself and sculpting it and casting it, and it is absolutely breathtaking. And I thought, why not help support a fellow maker, get something super awesome, and add it to the ever-growing collection of PR Props cast that I have in my man cave and build area. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint up one and try and make it as legit as I can looking regular like the Star of Spore. And I thought I would buy another one and turn it into something completely different. And what came to me pretty quickly once I got it was, let's make the other one into Patrick from Spongebob. <laughs> So today we are painting and modding some awesome Starro mask casts from PR Props. Let's get to uh, modding, sanding, painting. Let's get to build. I purchased two of these awesome masks from PR Props and the first thing I normally have to do is sand back quite a bit of it because I have a ginormous head. My head's quite a bit bigger than Jose's and luckily most of the time his masks have extra material on the sides that I can take from in order for it to fit me perfectly. I'll link to Jose's socials and Etsy down in the description below. Please consider checking out his shop and buying some of his awesome casts if you can. Help support creative people like him and myself to continue making stuff for others. Wear a respirator and work in a well-ventilated area while sanding resin cast. You don't want to breathe in the resin dust and the stuff gets everywhere. Now that it's properly fit to my face from multiple adjustments that I had to take on and take off my mask, I'm ready to carve out the hole in the middle so I can see. I start with a router bit on my rotary tool to chunk out a majority of it, then switch over to a sanding drum to smooth everything out. Not that the casting needs any modifications at all, it is a beautiful casting. I just like to mess around a bit with some of these sculpts that he's already cast out for me because it's got a lot of the cool details with a little risk from me to then modify. So I'm gonna use some freeform air epoxy by Smooth On. It is a two equal parts putty mix that allows me to add on to the casting itself. I put foil in the pupil to save me a little bit of putty and then after fully mixing it up together, begin to put Patrick's belly on top. It starts to set up in a couple of hours so I work in stages. It takes a light touch and it wants to kind of like stick to everything so I used a little bit of mold release spray on my hands and on my tools to prevent it from doing that. It's super light, especially compared to the epoxy sculpt that I also use, but for me, it's not as easy to shape. I didn't want to add too much weight to this mask, so the trade-off was what I had to go for, so I'm just going to work slow. <laughs>
I let my initial sculpt set up for about two hours or so, which gave it a chance to kind of firm up a bit. This allowed me to work on top of the stomach without worrying about messing up what I just sculpted in. Same process as before, I apply the epoxy on and start to shape it. I got some water to help me smooth it over a little bit this time as I worked. I used various clay sculpting tools to help me get some wrinkles and other details in there. I did my best to transition what Jose already had on his sculpts into the new portions that I've been adding on to kind of incorporate the two and make it blend together into Patrick. Once I was happy with it, I set it aside and let it fully cure, which takes about 24 hours. I used some isopropyl alcohol to get rid of any of the release or chemicals on it, then I hit both of them with the same gray automotive primer. With my reference image in sight and a rainbow of Platifex acrylic paint, I began the mini layers of painting both of these sculpts to life. I start by mixing up some colors and putting down a base layer for both the Starospore and Patrick. I put down two layers to get full coverage on both of them. Once they had dried, I sprayed it all down with a clear coat to protect the base colors for the next layers. To add color variation, much like the skin on a person, I put down several different colors and shades and then load up a set of colors to the sponge over my base coat. I do this for both masks again, trying to also pick up on a lot of the details because they are insanely awesome. Once that layer dried, I dry brush a little bit over the ridges and the bumps just to kind of set it off just a little bit further, especially on the iris of the Starro Spore.
I think I'm happy with the brighter, kind of cartoonish looking Patrick, so I'm gonna leave that one as is, but as far as the Starro, it's a bit too bright for me, so I'm gonna slime it up a little bit and add a little brown and red wash to bring back the contrast on the details. I slather on my mix with a wet chip brush and then wipe a lot of it off with a paper towel. After this is all dried up, I hit it with another layer of clear coat to make it shiny. I have a four inch split Christmas ornament globe that I'm gonna use for the lens, but it's a little too big for the sculpt. By using the wider dome, it sits lower on the build, so I need to cut off quite a bit to make it fit. I ended up doing the process that you see me doing here twice to make it close to where it needs to be. The tape just prevents the plastic from melting onto the outside surface. I mark a line with my cutting wheel using a piece of foam as a spacer to help me keep it even. Once marked, I cut the rim off and then try and fit it into place. Face shield and respirator are definitely on while doing this because if that cutting wheel overheats, they tend to explode and you don't want something going at that high in RPM sling right up at your face and taking out an eyeball. Protect yourself. To glue on the lens, I'm just gonna use some hot glue. Super glue will haze up acrylic and give it a milky look, which I definitely don't want. And I figured that I could probably also use five minute epoxy, but I thought that the hot glue was just as easy. And this would help me fill the gaps and allow me to do the transition over the skin a little bit better than the five minute epoxy just kind of sitting there. I ended up painting over the top of the hot glue to blend it a little bit better later off camera. Thank you. To hide my eyes and make the pupil and mouth area black, I simply hot glued in some black cross stitching mats. You could also add strapping to these if you needed to to secure it to your head a little better. Mine are a pretty snug fit on me, so I'm not really going to worry about it at the moment, but if I was to wear it to a con or something else outside of the house, I'll probably put some elastic on it just to be safe. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I really love how both these turn out. I am never disappointed when I buy stuff from PR Props. His casts are amazing. His skills are unmatched. Like he is truly 
an amazing artist and a super humble dude and probably one of the coolest guys that I've never had the pleasure of actually meeting in person, but have talked to online quite a bit. Um, I, I really like how the paint job on this turned out. That transition in the eyes, I think, did a pretty good job of. And I did my best to try and highlight all those details by hitting it with a dry brush at the end to kind of make all those little details pop. My derpy little Patrick there, I did my best to try and blend things where I could. Uh, I think his tum-tum has a nice transition along with running some of the details into his face where I actually had to go in and kind of mold it. Um, but yeah, I hope that you will um, definitely consider going to PR Props Etsy shop and looking at the amazing stuff that he has. I promise you, you purchase something there, you're not going to regret it. It is like next level stuff. Like it's, it's amazing. Maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to make something from a movie and make it look relatively correct or just go a complete opposite direction and make it as derpy as you possibly can. Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably they're going to ask you. How'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. Um, I'm going to wear the Starro. And I'll let you wear the uh, Patrick. So hold still. Let me get you in, in my sights. Here, here he comes. He's going to take over your mind. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see me continue to build awesome stuff like this, please consider joining these people listed here with me over on Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.